Yo, welcome to episode 25 of Seraphic Blue. Um, unfortunately, this is gonna be one hell of an annoying episode for me to uh, record because my earbuds are fucked up and uh, the audio balance is whack, at least on my end. Um, my left uh, earbud is really fucking dying out on me. I mean, I can still hear from the left, but it's really shit. Uh, I can't figure out uh, how to change the audio balance for these uh, earbuds. Uh, don't know how, because uh, normally what I do is just open up the sound settings and then just the levels, but because I'm uh, attached this earbud to my microphone, it, instead of my usual speaker, when uh, whenever I want to use the mic, uh, I don't know how to like actually go in and change my microphone's settings and stuff like that. I probably need to download some driver or whatever. But whatever. We, uh, we last left off uh, with a whole bunch of cutscenes. Um, we're gonna go over to Foxy's room to ask some questions because Lake's got some questions of, and whatnot. And why are you standing in front of Foxy's room? <laughs> really? Come on, Hassan. You do know this is Foxy's room, right? Yes, it is. Move aside, puppet. This isn't your post. Do not get above yourself, Stripling. Stripling? Yeah, right. Okay, whoops. That was an auto tugs that time. That was just me accidentally double uh, tapping. Why don't you try sounding a little more like a man in his 30s? Was manufactured in the year 2684. Huh? So, how old are you exactly? 138 years old, stripling. Awesome. What's with the commotion? I like his ear. And you're barring him from entering again? Well. For goodness sakes, just let him come in. Queen's orders, <laughs> scraphead. Deep. I'm sorry to burst your bottle, a bubble, but my body regularly undergoes through maintenance. It is constantly updated with the latest technology. I believe that makes me more youthful than you. <laughs> Damn. Sigh. You sure hate me, don't you, Hassan? The fact is, you are a young man, so you will have to be, so you will have to go through me first before you can enter any room occupied by Miss Minerva. <laughs> anyway, this is surprising. I didn't expect you to be visiting Foxy's room, Minerva. We were just talking about makeup, really. So it's girl talk. Kid, do you know why none of the public are able to recognize my lady as the queen? Just so you know, it's got nothing to do with the fact that she's only briefly appeared in public during her enthronement uh, last year. Beats me. Well, as Foxy mentioned, the problem apparently lies in my makeup. It was really caked on back then, and now it's barely a couple of brushes. So Minerva has lost her looks. What? Oh, why you? How dare you speak so flipping... Okay. Auto text. What? Am I breaking the law? He's right, you know. We're talking purely about makeup here. Makeup products are great as long as you can make a uh, woman appear young. However, too much makeup gives a clear impression of... Uh, in... In... In, in, in elegance. After all, makeup products only uh, make a woman look unnatural when they're overused. But lady, there's one thing you should do first when uh, you first return to your castle. This audio thing is really starting to bother me <laughs> already. Hire a new makeup artist and consider rehiring your current one as a blast. As a plastier? Oh, okay. Now then, Lake, what do you have for me this time? More questions, I suppose? Uh, yeah. 
So about this thing where natural conception is uh, illegal in Frizzite. Oh yes, I have to yet to talk to you about that. It is a very important matter. The Sarah Human Conception Law sets forth that it is an offense to give birth to children via traditional natural conception. But that doesn't mean children aren't being had, right? Of course it doesn't. There is an alternative to giving birth. Then I would like to ask two things. What is that other method? And why is natural conception even prohibited? Okay, I'll start off by answering your first question. The other method I was referring to is the primary primary one used by Sari humans today is known as artificial mer uh, maturation. Artificial maturation. Uh, that is where the sperm and the egg are brought uh, brought together and uh, vitro fertilization. The resulting embryo is then allowed to mature to infancy in an exclusive facility. The thing is, while natural conception establishes an axis between a spirit and the fo fotus and the womb, that is not so, okay. that is not so in the artificial maturation. In other words, the spirit does not naturally take control of a body during in, in the vitro fertilization so of course the body can't be called a living being therefore if this method is completely completed by artificially establishing an axis to link the body to a spirit a new sorry human infant will then be born this is hard to digest <laughs> then think of it this way this method is essentially the same as how humans give birth to infants However, one thing that uh, separates artificial maturation from natural conception is the absence of sexual intercourse in childbirth. Statistics have shown that the number of uh, daycare problems and presides such as child abandonment and child abuse is higher than that on the ground. Uh, the most likely reason for this is the affirmation lack of intercourse and childbearing, which translates into a lack of affection toward the children. So the difference lies in whatever or not there's pain involved in childbirth, huh? That is the prevailing opinion, yes. By the way, the procedures for childbirth in Frezite are not as straightforward as they seem. Giving birth requires a man and a woman of legal uh, to sign and seal a regulated agreement. Only after that is done can their sperm and egg be extracted at the designated medical institution. Later, the process of in vitro, vitro uh, fertilization, maturing the embryo, and establishing the, the axis are all carried out at the garden. An infant is then born and meets his or her parents. That is how children come into existence in Frenzite. What's that garden you speak of? The Frenzite Garden is the largest of all facilities in Frenzite. Located in the center of Frezite and directly above Laurentia, Gaia's giant tree. That's interesting. So that means the facility being directly uh, above Laurentia is right within the ascending flow from the soul stream. An exactly did an ex excellent deduction. Naturally, for several humans to exist, their bodies have to contain second uh, kernel souls. So I ask you, how are spirits gotten hold of so that they can become a second kernel soul? Well, there's second uh, kernel souls, which means they are originally the spirits of humans who have died. Yes. I see. That explains the garden's location. Exactly. Spirits that have uh, departed from humans ascend through the soul stream in Laurentia, and that is why the garden was built in the midst of uh, ascending flow of the soul stream. The garden has a ring-shaped uh, structure that fits the shape of the soul stream's uh, pathway. A field is uh, deployed in that ring to capture spiritual candidates 
for a second kernel souls from within the soul stream. So it's like throwing a fishing net into the stream. That's right. The garden also ensures that only sufficient number of spirits are captured and that all extra spirits captured are released. So the garden's main role is to draw for uh, spirits. And so that ends my explanation of the legal intercourse in Frezite. Any questions? I'm cool. Let's move on. All right. Like humans, we Seri humans can also conceive naturally. So now let me start over and explain my natural conception is uh, explain why natural conception is prohibited. As you already know, the world of Resite is around 60 years old according to historical records. Perhaps that is also the time when Seri humans first appeared in Gaia. Naturally, 60 years seem like a long period of time to us. However, given the internal nature of Gaia, 60 years is relatively short. In other words, Seri humans are a new species that has only appeared only recently in Gaia. And so, with us, uh, Seri humans still uh, acc uh, accumulating uh, to Gaia. We are all living lives out of balance. Mm. Take this for for example. If a new group of people suddenly join your circle of friends, you wouldn't feel totally comfortable around them, would you? Yeah, I guess not. Most likely you will feel unsettled at first. I guess that's why it is for most people. Personally though, I don't really care. Well, that's just how we Sarah humans feel deep down. Even today, we still do not feel entirely connected to Gaia's uh, prov providence. I want to pro Dude, I am really about to just Google search this shit and see how you pronounce it, because I'm having trouble pronouncing that word. Uh, auto text? Okay, cool. It can bring about a defect in the axis between a body and a second kernel soul. And that defect is a threat to the roots of life. It can result in many different kinds of disorders. Disorders of the body, mind, everything. This disease mainly occurs during infancy, when an infant's axis starts to become unstable. Such an infant is known as a defective infant. The official name of this disease is the Defective Serohuman Infant Syndrome, or DSHIS for short. DSHIS? However, this disease is not only capable of striking uh, serihuman infants, but is also capable of striking serihumans who have passed infancy. In the later case, the disease is especially known as the Tard... 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 tard ah, God damn it. D-S-H-I-S. So that's why natural conception is banned in Frezite. Yes. With natural conception, where everything is literally natural, the rate of DSHIS occurring is high. Whereas uh, for artificial maturation, uh, measures to control DSHIS are included. While I can't say for certain that the rate of DSHIS occurring from natural maturity is low, that rate is certainly manageable. But there's more? What is truly frightening about DSHIS is not the various disorders it causes. Do you remember back in Revelstroke when we were attacked by monsters dispatched by a person? Yeah, the ones with the black wings, right? If I'm not wrong, they're called Lucifers. Wait, don't tell me. They're related to this. Lucifer maturation syndrome is the final stage in the worst syn um, syndrome, or symptom, my bad, of DSHIS. In that stage, Seri humans infected with DHIS uh, mutate into grotesque monsters known as Lucifers. While Lucifer's bodies vary in shapes and sizes, there is just one feature which all Lucifers have in common. That is the black wings. They are the feathers that turn black and materialize upon mutation of Seri humans into black wings. Devils. Whoa, this is pretty cool. 
That's right. Devils are what Lucifers are known as on the ground. And that is the reality which sufferers of D DSHIS, who are mainly Sarah human infants, will eventually face. Now that I think about it, like, you said something about being a devil sweeper. Yeah, I certainly did. It's my job. I take contracts and sweep devils off the ground. I can't believe this. To think all of the devils I've killed before were former Sarah humans. I suppose you must be in shock hearing this now. Wow, this is actually some cool shit going on. Well, I'll be lying if I said no, but really, I'm at most only surprised. And the music that goes along with this is actually really enhances this shit. I like it. So you're not horrified. That's right. Uh, I, n I feel neither regretful nor guilty. It's either I kill or be killed. Of those two options, there's only one true answer, and that's to kill. So, how did the Lucifers make their way to the ground? Doesn't the celestial border prevent them from going there? It can't possibly be that the Lucifers have the ability to pass through the border, can it? Originally, Lucifers are dealt with through chemical enthu... enthu... No, I can't even pronounce that. However, in recent years, Gaia cancers have been roaching into Gaia's providence. It is the reason for the rise in numbers of outbreaks of the Lucifer Mutation Syndrome. And the Lucifers, in turn, are only becoming worse and more dis d diversified. The drugs used for infuate. Oh, God damn it. began to pres pres produce inconsistent results, varying from Lucifer to Lucifer. That erupt turn of events left us completely in the lur lurch. Uh, and in the end, the system to manage the Lucifers became a failure. I see. So being unable to deal with the increasing number of Lucifers in their own homeland, the Sarah humans resorted to casting them away? To the ground? Yes, you are right about that. It was a taboo, yet unavoidable last resort to dealing with the completely uncontrollable Lucifers. Lucifers that were impossible to you emphasize were dumped to the ground through the celestial tunnels at which Lucifer's quarantine centers were built. That became a law known as the DLG law. DLG stands for Dump Lucifers to the Ground. Jesus. The law uh, dictates that those reported uh, to the si signs of DSHIS are to be detained and later dumped to the ground once they become Lucifers. And the law began 20 years ago, the year when Lucifers first appeared in my world. Yes. That must be inf infuriating, isn't it? Pretty much. What are your thoughts? Well. I don't know. If I were a Sarah human, I'd probably do the same without hesitation. Though the people of the ground would suffer as a result, there isn't any way to deal with the Lucifers other than to dump them. Also, the important thing isn't wherever or not to dump Lucifers, or where to dump Lucifers. It's wherever or not to confront the issue with dumping Lucifers. If the issue is not confronted, Lucifers will continue to be dumped quietly without hesitation. If the issue is confronted, there will be a public outcry. That's how people are, for me. As long as problems don't come my way, I could care less. But can't you just say something? Oh, excuse me. But you can't just say something like that. It's all bad luck, really. Anything with bad luck is a form of sin. Hence, the only thing at fault is bad luck. You Sarah humans aren't to blame for having dumped Lucifers to the ground. Bad luck is to blame for having condemned it, the Lucifers to their fate. What you just said reminds me a little of life in chaos. That's how life is as a whole. It's a shitty, hopeless world. Either we find a fix to our problems or we die of stress. 
Well, certainly, there is no concrete uh, solution yet to the present situation. The basic idea of the DLG law is only a temporary emergency measure. Proposed solutions include uh, precautionary measures to outstrip DSHIS, new drugs for Ethunet, bodily salvation via cloning, cloning, and several others. I have aimed to research con. I aim to have research conducted on those solutions to revise the regulations on dealing with all Lucifers. Once that is realized, I will be certain to immediately banish the DLG law forever. Even if the Lucifers won't disappear soon after that, the devils will. Well, personally, I'm not bothered by all that. I don't particularly mind that you think this is all a shame. There's just one thing I want to ask. How would the other uh, officials uh, think? I had a feeling you might you would say that ask that. Yes. Of all the executives of the Internal Affairs Office, most of them simply treat the dev uh, the ground as a landfill for Lucifers. In other words, even though the DLG law is meant to be a stopgap measure, they wouldn't mind continuing it indefinitely. So that's why you two are here. It's what forced you out of your castle. Indeed it is. While our former queen, Madame Anita, was uh, considerably strong-minded, I believe Miss Minerva is more strong-minded than her. I would even go as far as to say that she has an iron will. That said, she's, she has firmly considered this present situation, in which Rezite stands to dominance and despise the ground to be extremely bad. She intends to propose with improved or improvement in the situation as quickly as possible. However, there are a substantial substantial amount of num some god damn it numbers of officials who disagree with her opinions. Cons con uh, securely, the current affa internal affairs office has been split into two factions. One of them is the faction of the coexistence which aims for the favorability relations, uh, relationship of the coexistence with the humans through the ways of Miss Minerva. And the other is the faction of dominance, which despises the humans as inferior uh, farm animals and follows the need for absolute dominance. Then I guess the faction of coexistence must be a at a num num oh, fuck numerical uh, disadvantage. Yes, unfortunately. Besides Miss Minerva and Madame Daisy, the only other member of the faction of coexistence are me and a few of the executives. As a result, the de fac the faction of uh, dominance is the powerhouse of the two. No, I would say that it is run completely rampant. 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 Rebellions against the queen uh, were considered a grave trans transgression during Madame Anita's uh, reign and were entirely unheard of. Now, however, they are seem quite likely. There appears to be a certain path uh, pathetic consistency in the behavior of those officials. In my mind, I can see them having excessive body fat as a result of cramming too much rich food down their throats. I can see them sliding into their jazz... uh... jazz... I don't know what that is. With their belly fat undiluting? Hideously. No, I can't even speak today. H hideously in the water. I could see them slouging in luxury chairs at their meetings with their breath reeking as they speak. And I can very easily see them protecting the one thing that they would truly care about. Their very own maple syrup. They would spread the syrup all over the world's resources guzzle them down as they chew them with their mouths half open in bliss. My point is, the officials you were talking about, the ones who look down on the humans, they will only make up a small percentage of all Sarah humans. The ground? Humans? Come to think of it, why do we even learn those in school? 
The only ones who would find those things meaningful are the handful of officials who have to worry about them. The ground is, to most Seri humans, a faraway land, isolated by the celestial border. Before the officials began to look down on the humans, no Seri human actually cared about the ground's existence. Well, maybe with the exception of parents, whose own children has turned into Lucifers and were dumped to the ground. Regardless, inappropriate terms uh, relate related to the ground, like landfill and farm animals, should have even come come about in the first place. So the ones who stand in Minerva's way make up the extreme minority, and they are just crappy plot politicians playing the roles of righteous saints. It's plain to see from this uh, that life's a total crock. Wait, Lake. What? Well, you've been to Hadwick before, right? Yeah, what about it? After listening to that talk about DSHIS, I got the chills for some reason. I see. Come to think of it, those infant angels in Hadwick are Sarah human children, aren't they? They're orphans, given uh, birth by prostitutes in chaos, after all. Granny Margot was uh, persist, persist, uh, about the children's future and believed they were better off in Hadwick than in chaos. Right. I'm sure you know that those children were born from natural conception. So they have DSHIS. There's no way to lower the risk of them succumbing to that disease. Granny has always feared the worst that the children would eventually turn into Lucifers. But well, I guess there's nothing we can do about that. Yeah, it's an abnormal case. But it's been so long since I dropped it by there. There's no telling what happened to them in the meanwhile. You mean they could be doing well? Yeah, they're normal kids after all. Ouch. Oh man. No dialogue. Shit. Late in that night, the OHG's leader and his team returned to the headquarters. So Minerva, Haas, and Foxy and I were scheduled to meet them the next day. So rain does fall in Frezite. The last thing I want to remember is back then. Time to get going. I have to go join the others in the meeting room. What a terrible day for rain. Episode 18, Shattered Promise, Endless Sobs of a Spirit, Region. Alright, wow, that, that was good. That was pretty interesting. Alright, meeting room. Uh, I'm going to assume it's like all the way up here, because I remember there being like a room up here. Or something. Yep. And here we are. Finally reunited. So, we meet again. Vene, is that you? Yes, it's me. Glad to see you're alright. Same to you. Edwin and Kane are the ones who came to my rescue. You are. 
Edwin Austin. I serve as the leader of the OHG. Pleased to meet you, Lake. Thank you for saving Vene. Pleased to meet. Eh? Are you sure about handing me this child? Please take him in. I have my reason re reasons for doing this. You know what? It never really occurred to me <laughs> about this. But what about the mother? Part of the, her umbilical cord is still attached to him. Syra is dead. She gave birth to this child in exchange for her life. My goodness. There's no time. You'll be involved in my dire situation if I don't get out of here soon. Say come in, will you? I really didn't realize to be dead. <laughs> uh, he's Lake's father. Lake, Lake, La uh, Lake, uh, Landovery. Will you come back for him someday? Eventually, when the time is right. If I stay alive, I suppose. No, I'll definitely live on. Alright. I wish you well. Whatever else might happen between now and then, you will always be the only father this child has. Please, take care of not to push yourself too hard. You have my word. Can I ask you, or can I, okay, I, I think that's a typo. Ask you one more question. If an angel were to come down to the land, what do you think he would do? I am sure that he will grant happiness to the people. In that case, he would have to, he will have these words to say. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Vinny, sorry, but could you stand back for a bit? Don't like Vinny. It was only a matter of time. Please, don't resort to violence. Oh shit. Edwin Austin, huh? Yeah. You know what this means, don't you? Yeah, I know. I'm your father. <laughs> you bastard! What the hell have you been doing? Stop it, Lake. And to think you had the f God damn it, why is it gotta say fooking? <laughs> How dare you let my mother die like that? Stop it this once, Lake. Let go of me! This bastard can't be forgiven! Tell me, did you even ever visit my mother's grave? Did you even lay a single flower for her? How could you just bury her, then just auto-text? Damn it, say something! Damn auto sex. I knew it. That is, of course, you left him completely alone. You're one to talk. Weren't you the one who decided my path in the first place? Do not voice the blame for this on me. The hatred in him. It's deep. Well, he believes you left uh, her alone and caused her to die as a result. Since that day, you have also never once visited her grave, or come back for him. You really have not once acted the way a father should behave. You just let those 22 years pass and allowed Lake's hatred of you to sink and sink its roots deep into his heart. Attempting to tear it out now is not going to be pull like pulling weeds from a garden. I know. Learn not to put yourself in trouble from auto text. Yeah, I t talk about not being able to say a word to him as his damn father. How about I try to calm him down? That would be good. Feel free to sp uh, spank him if you have to. Huh, wait a minute. Now that I think about it, isn't Edwin like a Sarah human? And, uh, what was, what was Venna's, uh, past life name? Or, you know, what was her name? Start with an S. Uh, she's completely human, right? So, would this mean, like, 
be like half human, half Sarah human? Wait, I want an explanation. Well, I don't give a damn about that bastard's feelings. I know that I upset you. I'm such a dumb son. Even my mother inside of you agrees, right? So you noticed, in a way, there's a certain warmth that I feel when you and I are together, and that's the warmth of my mother. I can feel her spirit right next to me. Syrah, that's her. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew it started with an S. I just couldn't remember it. Syrah Rosberg, that is the name of your grandmother. Wait, or the name of your mother, my bad. And I am the Sarah human whose spirit succeeded. Syrah's uh, as a second kernel soul. Normally, Sarah humans aren't able to recall memories of their past lives in detail. However, Syrah's spirit is extremely unique. Even though she has become me, I can still recall her memories to a certain degree. But for the most part, Syrah is Syrah, while I am me. I do not have vivid memories of the warmth and emotion that she had. Only ref referential re records and memories made of simple facts. And what probably happened during my memory loss was the lack of self-recognition caused me to misinterpret Cyrus' memories as my own. I guess you're right. You're still Vinny. And my mother is still dead. I suppose I will have to tell you about your fate. About why and how you were born. And what kind of significance your existence holds. Tell me. I'm ready for it. Alright. But before we begin, we need one more person to join in our conversation. If it's Edwin, can you tell him to shove it? I understand your feelings on that. But this is another important person. You mean there's someone else other than our family of three? Yes. You're talking about this rickety old man. That's right. This is Professor Dolan uh, Houston. He was the first person to conduct research on and discover the Gaia cancers. And he is our so-called godfather. He was previously a personal advisor to the CMGC and is now a researcher specifically, uh, specially attached to the OGC, or OHG. So he's got some solid resume, but what does that have to do with us? I'm mostly responsible for your lives. You're responsible? That time when you were as asleep near the river in the countryside was, for instance, indirectly a part of my responsibility. Wait. Alright, now that I think about it, you're the old man I saw back then. Yeah, I just it just occurred to me he had the same sprite. Wow, I didn't even realize that you met Dolan before? Yeah, the thing is, I found myself in the village of Equi... Equi... I can never still pronounce that. <laughs> in this world of Frezite after falling down the soul stream. Then as soon as I wake up from my sleep near the river there, this old man was right in front of me. I had thought you were a misfit. You did not seem to know anything about Frezite and spoke about things like the... East and West continents. Even now, you still behave as if you do not belong in this world. Those are clearly the traits of a person from the ground. Truth is stranger than fiction. This is most certainly fate. So, what are you going to talk to me about? We will first cover the details surrounding your birth, and we'll start off by explaining the significance of your existence. This is something Dolan is well versed in, so I will let him do the talking. If you please. Back then, the situation that we researchers were in was extremely intense. It was either difficult or impossible to actually kickstart research projects. However, when it came uh, to shaping the lives of the three of you, it was very much possible. Project Sapphiric Blue. That's where it all began. 
the Gaia Cancers. They were cancerous tumors that fed, feed on the planet and exist in countless numbers. Not the hundreds or the thoughts or the thousands, but much more than those. And they still multiply non-stop to today. Consequently, no matter how people try to eradicate them, it is in reality impossible. So you're saying there's no way to save the planet. It appears to be the case. At the very least, I can say that Gaia is under direct assault by the Gaia cancers. As such, we researchers changed our way of thinking. We saw that destroying one Gaia cancer after another would not do any good. And so we thought that if we can somehow develop a power that was strong and comprehensible enough to cover Gaia entirely, we might be able to wipe out all the Gaia cancers at once. That was when we discovered the method for that. Currently, humans, the first form of life form, and serahumans, the second life form, are enforced uh, as two separate races under Gaia's providence. However, from what we understood, if a human and a serahuman were to come together and give birth to a child, the clash of the very nature of reality would come about, giving rise to tremendous energy. Yep. Time for an explanation on this. The energy would be triggered upon contact with the Gaia's body and would possess enough strength to eradicate the Gaia cancers. It is a phenomenon that we call Gaia's rebirth. It is also the one and only method of eliminating the Gaia cancers in a bid to save our planet and secure a future. And so there was only one thing to be done. The one condition that we needed to fulfill is trigger Gaia's rebirth. It was to bring into existence a hybrid of a human and Sarah human. Hybrid. To be more specific, it is to be the birth of a person mixed human and Sarah human descent. So you're saying, that's who I am? And that my mother's a human while the bastard's a Sarah human? Yes, you are half human, half serahuman. You are also the main body of ser seraphic blue. I suppose you already know this, but the race of serahumans has yet to be fully settled in Gaia. Similarly, the existence of a half human, half serahuman alone is unstable in, in the extreme. Rather than just being a new element of Gaia, your existence is the one and only of its kind under Gaia's providence. A half human, half Sarah human. In theory, you were able, you were unstable uh, being whom we originally feared would cease to exist at any time. In that case, why is it that you are still able to remain healthy today? The answer is because of your father, Edwin, and your mother, Syra who has been reborn as Vene. Those two beings, who were originally a Seri human and a human res re respectively, have the unique ability of securing your existence like an anchor. To put it another way, a half-human, half Seri half human alone would be viable to succumb to the darkness of Gaia's providence. That is where the parents come in. In a way, they form the two wings of the child to keep the child stable. And with that comes the dis, uh, descent of an angelic light being upon our world. Therefore, if we researchers categorize this being as an angelic savior of Gaia, and the codename for it is Sepharic Blue. Of the three who make up Sepharic Blue, one is a human parent who ensures stability of the child's human side and is the Sepharic Blue's first wing. The second is the Sarah human parent, who ensures the stability of the child's Sarah human side, and this is very blue's second wing. And the third is the child of the aforementioned two, a half human, half Sarah human, also the main body of seraphic blue. Yes, right now your late mother, Syra, is now Vene, is a seraphic blue's first wing. Your father, Edwin, is Seraphic Blue's second wing, and you are the main body of Seraphic Blue. With 
that's strange. Based on what you just said, my existence as a hybrid of a human and Seri human should have triggered Gaia's rebirth by now. So why are the Gaia cancers still here then? Uh, do something go wrong? Did something go wrong with the Gaia's rebirth? Unfortunately, our enemy is not so uh, permissive as to allow that to happen. All Gaia cancers will be eliminated if Gaia's rebirth is activated. There is no way they would stand by quietly and watch that happen. As of now, six remaining malicious Gaia cancers in India, the practitioner, are intruding on Gaia's providence. Together, they form a barrier against Gaia's rebirth. And while they are at it, they plan to obliterate Ser Seraphic Blue. So that's why India has been coming after me and Vene. Seraphic Blue is a single largest threat to the Gaia cancers after all. The three of you and Ende are clearly destined to be arch enemies with each other. So that means if the remaining six Gaia cancers in Ende are defeated, Gaia's rebirth will be activated. The world will be saved and your battle will be over. I see. I get it now. So I've been caught in the center of a battle for the world's existence ever since I was born. My, his, his accept, acceptance of this of his situation is surprising. I thought he would throw a fit. I agree. No matter how I panic and try to escape from reality, there's no denying the fact that Ende, that bastard, has already appeared before me. It's useless to run away. The only path for me is to face the obstacles head on. Besides, I won't be satisfied unless I personally kill that bastard. Alright, so I now know about the significance of my existence. The next thing to talk about is my birth. But how complicated, complicated is, can that be? After, re -re uh, after we researchers discovered Gaia's rebirth, we began, to, we began the move to bring forth Seraphic Blue. The Spiritualization Department, Section BSB, was established within the CMGC. Project Seraphic Blue was initiated there. A whole project for a single childbirth? That's so over the top. But the birth of a Seraphic Blue was different from that of a normal child. Specifically, it was about giving birth to a unique hybrid. A fusion of two races meant to be kept separate from each other. That alone was an absurd difficult uh, task to perform. We researchers tried all sorts of methods to bring this about. Captured humans from the ground, did experiments on their bodies, and basically committed many associated crimes against humanity. However, to uphold the great cause to save the planet, we had to forge a path onward through tearing flesh and streaming blood. More than 300 lives were lost by that point, and still no results have been oh, it. produced. It was unacceptable. We grew impatient, tearing, tearing our hair out as we whacked our brains for this solution. However, in the midst of all of that, we came up with a plan that completely op opposed the conventional artificial and forced techniques. That plan was a complete shift to natural methods. Instead of relying on a laboratory process, a human and a necessary human would naturally reproduce and give birth to a child. Thereupon, young men and women from the CMGC was selected and dispatched to the ground to pose as humans and live their daily lives. Edwin must be one of those people then, and I was produced as, uh, and I was a product of his mission. That is correct. Those people went to the ground to attempt to get in touch with humans of the opposite gender. Damn. Their goal was seduction and courtship, with the ultimate result of that being the natural birth of the Seraphic Blue. That was the first mission of Edwin Austin, then a novice agent of the CMGC. But your birth was in truth an accident. In the time it took for you to be born, our plan was chaotic. Despite that, you were still born. 
that was a result of the dedication of one man, Edwin. Now then, this would be the perfect time to switch narrators. It would be more appropriate to let you take over from here. Indeed, a narrative that is best told by the person it concerns. I will now tell you everything that happened. From how Edwin and Syra met to the time when you were born. The beginning of the endless cold rain. Alright, I think I'm gonna stop it right here. Yep, cliffhanger, but I'm out of breath. It's already 50 minutes. And yeah, see you guys in the next episode.